am Dr. Chinmayi, consultant at Garbagudi IVF Center, Jainagar. So today uh, session I'll be uh, talking about uh, what is semen analysis and how important it is. We see many of the times, uh, even today, even among an educated couple, we see it is always the female who walks in first and her evaluation is being done and uh, they say, okay, let, let's finish off the female part and then go to the male part. But it is not true anymore. So the incidence of infertility in both in females and males is being almost the same. So it is very, very important to evaluate males and females, like evaluate a couple together when they present with infertility. If we look at what are the, if I have to concise this and say there are three basic tests that we need to evaluate whenever we see a patient with infertility so what are those three basic tests minimum tests when we talk about females the three minimum tests is one is whether she's releasing her eggs normally or not ovulating which can be identified through ultrasound second thing is uh, what uh, how her tubes are functioning whether they're functioning normally or not which can be identified through HST or laparoscopy third thing is male evaluation through semen analysis so semen analysis is one of the key uh, investigation when we are evaluating a men with uh, evaluating a couple for infertility and if you want to look at what is the male related causes so how is this semen analysis evaluation done what are the parameters that we're going to see is what I'm going to tell you in today's session so uh, whenever the semen sample is collected so uh, we look at various parameters in it right from the volume so um, even a lower volume higher volume will tell us what could be the possible causes for infertility so whenever there is a low volume so most common reasons it will be because of the spillage or improper collection of the sample Second thing is, or it can be sometimes, especially in those who are known diabetics, uh, we see there is a chances of retrograde ejaculation where it goes up in the reverse direction into the urinary bladder. Because of that, the volume will be lesser or some form of blockage can cause reduced volume. So like this, through volume itself, we can evaluate whether some of the causes, whether that is the reason for infertility or not. So how much is the normal volume is anything that is more than 1.5 to 5.5 is considered as normal volume. So uh, next, coming to the pH. The normal pH of the semen is about 7.4. It is more of alkaline in nature. So next, we see something called as viscosity. So viscosity, uh, whenever we see that the sample is highly viscous, meaning it should undergo liquefaction within 30 minutes of collection, in case it doesn't happen. So what could be the possible reason? Most of the time, it will be because of infections. So whenever there is infection in the semen, what happens is it will damage the normal healthy sperms because of which it loses its motility and uh, the debris or dead cells will be more and pregnancy chances will decrease. Therefore, um, uh, the viscosity will also give us an idea what could be the possible reasons. The next important uh, parameter of it is count. What is the normal count that we see? The normal count, anything that is more than 15 million per ml, or call, it's also called as concentration, per ml is, is, is what is expected of a normal semen analysis. So whenever it goes below that, so then that person needs an evaluation to see what could be the possible reasons. And depending on the severity also, like if it is 10 million or less than 5 million, we call it severe oligo, where the count is reduced drastically because of n number of reasons. One, because of smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, excessive stress, the kind of job that he is doing, or uh, because of certain medications uh, for other health effects, certain uh, antihypertensive drugs, all these things. And also uh, some people take st uh, medicines to reduce their cholesterols all these things will reduce the sperm count even sometimes excessive of exercise too much of exercise too much of uh, steroid intake all these things reduces the sperm production so um, whenever we see low count we need to evaluate in these terms the next important parameter what we see in semen analysis is the motility. So what percentage of sperms have the forward moving capacity? So in that again it is divided into two parts. One is the total motility, one is progressive motility. So when you say motility we look at how many percentage of sperms have the capacity to go forward uh, that is what is most important that is progressive motility and that should be at least 32 percent and above when it is less than that natural pregnancy chances will be less than 10 less than 8 percent in them so in such patients what is more useful is to go for an IUI procedure because in IUI we can improve the motility and place it very close to the tube so that the sperms have to travel a shorter distance 
so this is how motility is equal is very very important the next parameter that we see is morphology that is each sperm has a normal structure like head neck tail so they should have a normal uh, features so at least 4% of the sperm should have these normal features in case they do not then also the pregnancy chances gets affected then how many of them are alive or how many of them are dead at least 58% should be live sperms among the total sperms that we evaluate and these are the basic tests that we see in semen analysis along with that we also do certain additional tests which is called as dna fragmentation to look for sperm functions or to see what could be the other reasons why a person is not conceiving so through all these um, uh, methods to a thorough analysis one can understand what could be the possible reasons and what treatment is necessary for that person so and also important uh, to know like how the sample needs to be collected there should whenever a person is giving a sample for evaluation there should be a gap of abstinence of about at least 3 to 7 days which is ideal anything less will end up giving a low count anything a low count low volume anything more more than 7 days chances of having less motile sperms chances of having dead sperms are higher so therefore collecting between 3 to 7 duration of uh, the abstinence duration is very very important third thing should we just uh, based on one semen analysis say that, that it is abnormal no we should always repeat it after a gap of one month or 20 days and see whether the same kind of parameters is repeating again because sperm production is a continuous that process that is happening and it can improve over time and third thing any recent infections can also affect the sperm parameters so whenever a person has gone through a severe illness in the last one one and a half months we should always repeat it after one month and see whether the same parameters remain or it will show an improvement so by doing a thorough analysis of semen test we will know what is the possible cause for infertility so we put a small example here uh, we saw a pay couple who've been trying for a treatment for almost 5 uh, year the 3 years post marriage and um, the husband never went for evaluation and wife was has undergone an n number of tests scans blood tests hormonal analysis treatments everything and finally when semen analysis was done it was found to be azu meaning there were no sperm at all so that was the reason why they were not conceiving and immediately an ivf was they were advised to go for an ivf procedure because it was an azu spermia so with ivf there were the sperms with the newer tech techniques like pesa tesa we can take sperm directly from the testes and that will with that uh, they had a healthy pregnancy if this was done a 3 years ago where we say that semen analysis is the basic test for men uh, in fertility probably they would have had a, a healthy pregnancy much earlier itself so evaluating a male and a male infertility through semen analysis is very very important it will give us a lot of vital information as what is the possible causes and how do we treat it and overcome it so it is one of the vital test as a part of evaluation of an infertile couple thank you